But what uh, what Dr. Hart is talking about is in the first chapter of the book, which I guess you haven't read, um, and I really should have a copy for you. <laughs> Stupid of me. Um, I got a copy uh, in my bag. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's probably it's marked up. Though. Yes. <laughs> but so this is fascinating to me. The the British, you know, they colonized India. And they set up what they called lunatic asylums, really psychiatric hospitals, sort of very primitive psychiatric hospitals. And they were really initially for soldiers in the Indian Army. And they were run by British doctors. And what these doctors really as early as like the late 1850s, 1860s noticed was that a lot of the people who showed up in these hospitals were showing up with cannab- what they called ganja, actually. In India, it's called ganja um, or bong, which is a very weak preparation of, a, of, of <clears throat> basically uh, – uh, uh, Indian hemp, just sort of low-grade cannabis. Um, and so and so they started counting, and they realized that 20 to 30% of the people who were coming to asylums were heavy cannabis users. And that was way more than alcohol. It was more than opium. And this really fascinating doctor named uh, George Francis William Ewens wrote a book in 1908, and he looked at the evidence. And and it is amazing to hear how he describes schizophrenia, how he describes cannabis, how he describes the cases of violence around cannabis. It's like it's like any psychiatrist today, certainly any forensic psychiatrist like my wife, would would like everything in the book would ring completely true. And it was so fascinating to me to stumble on this and realize this is something people have been talking about for more than 100 years. Mm. So – could we uh, agree that there are some people where cannabis is not a good idea? Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. We could agree that. Yes. I think I think we all agree. Um, we also agree that some people can't eat peanuts. Right? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And yeah, it's not the same thing though. Well, but yeah, you know why? Peanuts kill you. That's true. Well, yeah, it's more uh, dangerous. Uh, yeah. So I think it's like yeah. seventy six hundred a year. Yeah, people die from peanuts. So, Again, yeah. I think more people die from cannabis as a result well, of the homicide ridiculous. and the suicide. Okay, well, there's no correlation that there, you there's can no prove on paper that. that I know somebody's got to do the work. But wait but, a minute. But why are you saying that then? Because I've looked at enough data to tell me. You think marijuana is causing homicides? Oh yeah, this is what the book is about. But in how so? What, because where? it causes paranoia and psychosis in people. And paranoia and psychosis are huge risks for homicide. And schizophrenia okay. is a but huge risk But there's multiple yeah. studies that refute that. Like, there's uh, multiple there, studies. There are no studies that refute that paranoia and psychosis are huge risks for homicide. Schizophrenia is a 20x, 20 okay. times, Joe. Well, mm-hmm. Jamie, I sent you a document uh, yesterday. I mean, there's there's multiple studies that, that show that you know marijuana laws are not associated with, with any wait, type wait, of violence. We're, okay, so, okay, but so let's, we're talking about, about marijuana that's a, laws. Yes, that's so let's right. just talk about the marijuana use, use of the drug yes so the use of the drug which could possibly trigger psychosis psychosis and schizophrenia which are correlated with murder is that what you're uh, saying they're not correlated they're triggers that's triggers. an absolute fact yes triggers I, the, because of the paranoia and delusions the, and you think that someone's out to get you and they're not absolutely i mean the the what uh, are the numbers the, okay so the numbers are if you're if you have a diagnosis of schizophrenia uh, you are 20 times as likely to commit homicide as somebody who's healthy. Now, it's actually worse than that for cannabis, okay? And here's why. What the, so the National Alliance for Mental Illness and the mental illness advo- advocacy groups hate talking about this. Why do they hate talking about it? Obviously because it stigmatizes people with mental illness. So what they say, and this is true, is if you have a diagnosis but you're taking your antipsychotics, even though the side effects might be unpleasant, you're in treatment, you're you're – you're not using recreational drugs. Your risk for violence isn't that high. It's not that much higher than a healthy person, okay? And, you know, fortunately, healthy people don't commit murder that often. The problem is if you if you think about the math for half a second, if there's this one group of people who don't have a very high risk for murder or serious violence, who because they're not using, because they're on antipsychotics, it means that the excess risk in the people who are using and whose untru- whose psychosis is untreated, it must be spectacularly high, and the numbers bear that out. So, so there's a really good study from last year, 2018, a small group of patients in um, in Switzerland. Now, Switzerland is a safe country; has a low base crime rate, but 50 percent of the people who were using cannabis and had psychosis over a three-year period committed violence in that group of people. That's mostly 20-something men. 
Well, you know, there's there's a study here, and I just sent it to you, uh, Jamie, and it's it's titled um, "Risk Factors for Violence in Psychosis: A Systemic Review and Meta Analysis of 110 Studies." So, you know, that's it's it's quite a few studies. Yeah. Okay, so um, you know, let me just just read uh, part of it out, out to you. So, violence was strongly associated with the history of poly substance abuse, strongly associated with the diagnosis of comorbid substance use disorder and recent substance misuse, and moderately associated with the history of alcohol's misuse, a, a history of substance misuse, uh, recent alcohol misuse, recent drug misuse, and a history of drug misuse. It was unclear if there was an association between violence and a history of cannabis misuse. So again, this is 110 studies. Uh, they very carefully looked at, at all of the different risk factors as to what could so, trigger violence. Just let me finish, Alex. Okay. And what they said, again, it was unclear if there was an association between violence and a history of cannabis misuse, right? So that's 110 studies. So cannabis use in there is gonna get locked in with polysubstance use. <clears throat> Because a lot of people who use are going to be using other drugs. Um, Poly substance means multiple substances: right. alcohol, cannabis, Ex fentanyl. exactly. So, uh, but everything so else without, was found to have s significant statistical with, significance. Without, and I have not. not I do just not know minor. the study that uh, Dr. Hart is talking about. I'd like to look at it. Um, without looking at it, I can't push back as hard as I would like. What I can tell you is that I have many studies in the book that show that cannabis use is associated with violence in people with psychosis, okay? And more broadly, it's associated with violence in the general population in large studies, in studies of high school students and bullying, in studies of people who were vacationing in Ibiza, in, in, in studies of young men in China and the UK. There are big studies out there that show cannabis use is associated with violence. Ibiza. Abiza. I've been to Abiza twice. I know. Wouldn't you like to be the <laughs> guy doing it? Are you supposed to say Abiza? <laughs> are you supposed to say it? You are supposed to say Abiza. Yeah. I got grilled over there for that. Yeah. They get mad at you. Yeah. You're supposed to. I can't believe I just said it. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, some dignitary or royal person had a lisp, right? Isn't that how it all started? Is that true? Yeah, uh, yeah, I believe so. Uh, uh, noted. Yeah, um, the way the, the people in Spain pronounce uh, words was directly uh, affected by this one person, apparently. But um, so this uh, this this correlation um, between people that have schizophrenia and using cannabis. How do you is is schizophrenia a diagnosis that's purely based on behavior? Basically, yes. Yeah. It's a clinic. There's no blood test. Right. You can't do a brain scan. It's basically how you behave and and what you tell the doctor about how you're right. feeling. Right. Right. And, and, and what about fMRIs? Subjective. Or it's very subjective. How yeah. so? So Be because you're you're asking someone basically a series of questions. I mean, it's no different than you know depression really i mean you're right. just just asking someone a series of questions and then you know based upon that uh which is very subjective then you're going to make you know a clinical decision it, whereas when it's like a blood test like if someone you know passes uh you know a certain amount of, of hemoglobin a1c you know depending on which chart you're looking at then you're going to call that person pre-diabetic or diabetic right. but well, you know unfortunately we just don't have those objective measurements well, and again that's why you know alex was saying earlier that um that you know the uh, they couldn't really figure out you know how many people in the united states had had schizophrenia and i understand that but at the same time too i mean it's okay to to adjust you know the way that you diagnose someone over the course of of the years and you learn things because you know you could easily say that almost everyone has some type of mental illness and i mean people should understand that you know there's seven different basic human emotions you know i've talked about this before it's there's there's anger there's contempt uh, there's there's disgust, there's fear, sadness, surprise, and happiness. That's seven. So, you know, depending on which way surprise goes, I mean, six out of those seven are, are are negative, right? Because we're wired to basically detect threats. So, you know, um, when, when we're we're making you know the all these diagnoses, I think we have to be careful because you know some people are calling themselves depressed and some people are calling themselves anxious when really you know they're just not dealing with basic human emotions that they need to understand. And, and need to deal with like people are getting angry about being angry or like depressed about being depressed like if you feel one of these emotions just kind of sit with it and just kind of reflect on it and i think you know that, that's a much much better way to kind of kind of te uh, tease things out but 
but you know to come back to to my original point i think that you know more people are, are understanding that um you know we don't just need to give out a pill for everything and that you know everyone shouldn't just be labeled as having a mental health diagnosis because if things just keep you know going the way they are you know what what's by, by 2040 it's going to be like 50 percent of people are going to have like a mental health disorder so right? people just need to understand that life is hard you got to deal with these emotions sometimes it's not that big of a deal and that's why for some I'm, folks I'm, and that's for why some folks, yeah for right? some folks and that's and why i'm such a big are, fan of, of jordan peterson because yeah. you know he's 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 kind of tough on people and he said okay, but that, let me stop you there <clears> because <throat> sure, jordan peterson was on ssris for years yeah that's he interesting yeah he he was. Was. for a long long time i yeah. mean like for a long long time as was his family and yep. what's, what's crazy about him is what got him off is a carnivore diet. I know, I know, <laughs> so, uh, I know. Elimination diet where he yeah. only eats meat with salt and drinks water. And he's yeah, healthier than he's ever been in his life. And that is a, another massively controversial subject. So, yeah. so let me uh, push back a little sure. bit. Because I think people, you know, as controversial as the book has been about uh, about cannabis and psychosis this violence issue is even more controversial mm -hmm. and obviously for, for for a fair number of people it doesn't really it doesn't uh, sync with the stereotype it, it doesn't say and it doesn't sync with how they've experienced cannabis use right, right. so i think i think alcohol is a really interesting uh mm -hmm. comparison Sorry. um <laughs> blame the canadian um <laughs> Why do you have to go national on them? <laughs> <laughs> we, we were talking about, my wife's actually from Newfoundland. Oh, okay. Um, so right. we, Newfoundland. Newfoundland, as in understand. Right. Marijuana no, increases. No, Newfoundland is how you say really? it. You can't say Newfoundland. I've trained myself to say it that way. You're telling no, me like, I'm wrong? Newfoundland. It, look what Newfoundland. Jamie just pulled up. Viol um, marijuana use increases violent behavior. 50-year study finds casual link between cannabis and subsequent violent behavior. Uh, new research published uh, online in advance of print of the journal of psych uh, Psychological Medicine concludes that continued use of cannabis causes violent behavior as a direct result of changes in brain function that are caused by smoking weed over many years. Researchers have long debated a possible link between the use of marijuana and violent crime. In contrast to alcohol, meth, and many other illegal drugs, the mellowing effects of cannabis seem unsuited to promoting violent behavior. However, ample, ample previous research has linked marijuana used to increased violent behavior the sticky problem in such studies are that many confounding factors co-founding factors uh involved in interpreting this correlation so uh, so, let, going. so, so okay. okay. It is very difficult to determine whether or not any statistical correlation between marijuana use and violent behavior are uh casu causally linked or instead the two associated uh or instead the two are associated through some other factors such as socioeconomic status, personality traits, or many other variables that are related to the propensity to use marijuana. Um, so I, I think that's a fairly good summary of, well, the, of, of the issues. To What's add, up, James? To um, add, the study came from uh, 411 boys who were born in 1953 in London, 97% of which were Caucasian, and all of them are raised in two-parent households. So... So you know, so those people are relatively stable if they're two family, two parent houses. Unless their hand, parents beat the shit. Up. That's also no, it's possible. But so, so let me. So, so, so I think the alcohol comparison is again a good one because anybody who's ever been in a bar at nine p.m. and gone back at two a.m. knows that alcohol disinhibits people. Mm -hmm. Right? It causes fights. Right? It it makes people loud. It makes causes a lot of fucking too. It, it does. Does <laughs> no, it really does. Right? It's good and bad. I don't so, know if that's good. I mean, <laughs> sometimes it makes yeah, people I mean, like some that. people think That's, alcohol and sex are a terrible idea. Uh, I, right? I mean, right. It, it certainly causes some sexual violence. Sure. Too. Yeah, so, yeah. so, okay. But at the same time, everybody knows that you can have a drink, at, you know, you can have a beer at the back of your barbecue, you can have glass a glass of wine, of wine with at dinner. dinner. That's right. Sure. And it doesn't mean that you're going to get in a fight. And, and you it actually eat, might enhance your conversation, it, it, social lubricant, it, it, all that good stuff. All that good stuff. And you might even know people, I mean, I do know people who I would say have a problem with drinking, okay? But it's mostly they're sitting at home drinking scotch, watching baseball until they fall asleep that night. Now, that's obviously not a healthy way to use alcohol, but it doesn't make them violent. But we know on a population basis that alcohol causes violence. It causes drunk driving. It causes problems. And it said that in the study that, that I quoted earlier, but it's, it said that alcohol, again, they, they didn't, or sorry, cannabis, they weren't sure. Right. So, okay. But so this is, again, I would like to read the paper that you're quoting from because I have so much other research. But here's, here's what I'm saying about cannabis, okay? 
cannabis for a lot of people, yeah, they can just smoke it. And as people, you know, as many people have tweeted at me, the only thing I attacked was a bowl of nachos, right? Mm -hmm. Like, and so, and so that's true for some people. But that could be but, said with alcohol as well. But that's exactly biological variability. And there's so exactly. many studies that say that that the cannabis laws have actually decreased crime. I mean, I'm looking no, no, at a study no, no, right no, no, now. Wait, wait, wait. You got to no, let, no. let, 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 let me finish. You got to let me finish. You got to let me finish. Let him finish. Okay, go ahead, Alex. Um, so, so. Even though for many people, cannabis isn't going to cause violence, that doesn't mean it can't cause violence in some people, especially- Or at least could be a factor. Or at least could be a factor, especially with the kind of violence that I am talking about and that I write about in the book, which is, again, so alcohol, uh, it maybe makes an argument into a brawl. It makes a brawl into something where somebody picks up a stick. Mm -hmm. It makes that into something where somebody pulls out a knife. It escalates. Right. Cannabis is different. Cannabis causes paranoia and psychosis. And it certainly causes those things temporarily, even if it doesn't cause them permanently. So a distortion and in reality that could lead to you doing to something, something terrible. And it's usually to somebody you're not actually fighting with. Mm -hmm. It's a family member. The, the worst cases that I've, and I've really seen a lot of these cases are basically innocent family members who are just in the way when somebody loses touch with reality and literally thinks like this my 85-year-old grandmother is going to kill me, so I better stab her to death first. That happens. It happens a lot. And if you look at the amount of violence that people with psychosis commit on a population-level basis, it looks like people with schizophrenia commit about 6 to 10% of all the murders in this country. And it looks like people with sort of broader, def more broadly defined psychosis, again, bipolar with psychosis, other psychotic conditions, temporary psychosis, they might be responsible for as much as 20% of the violent crime in the United States. That's a lot of violent crime. And what I'm saying is that it is quite clear that drug use mediates that violent crime. In other words, if you're not using, you can keep your impulses in check. Mm -hmm. But when you do use, you become dangerous. So when we're talking about vi biological variability, if we factor in schizophrenia, essentially what you're saying is that there are people that have schizophrenia that don't commit violence, but that they're much more likely to commit violence if you add some sort of psych medication, whether it's marijuana, whether it's something else that perturbs reality for them, and particularly well, marijuana. Antipsychotics bring down the use. Uh, but you said medication. Uh, yeah, so recreational drugs. Recreational. The, worst, the worst cases of all are cannabis and a stimulant. Because to the they both like cocaine or, or meth, meth exactly yeah so when you get that you get paranoia from two sources mm -hmm. and you get the only good thing about cannabis from this point of view is it kind of knocks people down a little bit but meth brings them right back up so is it fair to say that what we don't know is that we don't know whether or not these people like this young man with this terrible story from Connecticut yes we don't know whether or not he would have become uh, a schizophrenic and and exhibited those symptoms without the marijuana we really don't know we, but we do know he did with it that's that's correct and and what I would also say is that for somebody like that and this is quite clear on a population level basis with people with schizophrenia is you got to discourage them from using right. they really have to be discouraged right. because it brings out the worst right and 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 you know somebody said this a, a, a friend of mine an old friend of mine from the New York Times said, so every time there's a hurricane, people, some people on the right say, well, you can't prove that global warming caused that one hurricane. That would have mm -hmm. happened anyway. And, he, and they're right. You can't prove it. And you can't prove that any one case of psychosis was caused by marijuana. But when you look at the big studies, at the population level data, the association is really clear. And everything points the same way. And the synthetic cannabinoids, K2 and spice, those can clearly produce psychosis in people. And people with psychosis tend to slip back into it if they use at some point you got to start to say to yourself why does everything go the same way yeah i, well, have a, I also have a personal <coughs> friend and i really didn't think about this guy but there's another personal friend that i know that is a martial arts instructor that had a, a psychotic break he became schizophrenic and he's a regular marijuana user and the people around him associated that with that and in fact people that are regular cannabis users were trying to get him to stop using marijuana if, if you're I'm close to, to being no. on the edge and you use a little bit of, of cannabis for sure, it let can, me tell you something. It can this guy that. was not on the edge when I knew him. Yeah. Uh, when I knew him, he was very rational. 
very rational, but something happened somewhere along the line. Was he? Did he become a pretty heavy smoker over time? I do not know because we don't live in the same area anymore. But he got really heavily, uh, really heavily medicated and did some really crazy shit and wound up being hospitalized. Yeah. And this was not the case before. I mean, whatever it was that triggered him. I mean, it, when I was around him when he was younger, I would have said he's a total normal guy, and I would have never th- saw that coming. He was a heavy marijuana user, heavy, heavy. But I don't, when, I don't know how he's doing now. I hope he's okay. But we're, you know, we have mutual friends. Yeah. And uh, he became a schizophrenic. And and you know, you will see you know cases like that. But you know, when you do look at a lot of the larger data on on cannabis and violence, I mean, it's just it's just not there. Like, there's lots of data that suggests that you know medical marijuana laws, for example, can actually have a decrease in in overall. They, in overall well, they crime. could. I mean, but, that, but I think I mean, there's that a study that says that, that gives no comfort to the people who lose their children because of these psychotic That's right. breaks. <laughs> That's right. And, and, and those studies are really bad. So the place that you can criticize. Why are they bad though? Because there, because state level data is not great. The place the book has been criticized. The Rand, mo- re, there was oh. a Rand review though in, in 2013, oh, yeah. and I mean that that's oh, again me, that stated so that, state that, level that data. So marijuana okay. use does not induce violent that's crime, that's and the links between marijuana use and property cl- crime are thin. So can we, and stop, can we mar- stop right there? I think we all agree that marijuana use by itself, with people that aren't schizophrenic, probably doesn't induce violent crime. But with people that are schizophrenic or people where it triggers schizophrenia, it could potentially induce violent crime. Yes. My friend did not get violent, although he did do a violent thing. It wasn't to a person. Yeah. Um, I think I think we have to be really careful because there's no just like with diet, just like with the food and you know like uh, allergies, all these different variabilities when it comes to human beings. I think we have to be really really careful about lumping all people together when it comes to how they get affected by various compounds. Yeah. Yeah. So so the state level thing, if you want, I'll... I'll so the place okay. the book yeah. has been criticized, in my mind, sort of the most fairly is it points out that in the four states that legalized first, which is Alaska, Washington, Oregon, Colorado, um, if you look at 2013 and then you compare that to 2017, mm-hmm. murders and ag assaults, violent crime... Um, are up substantially in those states and substantially more than in the U.S. Can I stop you there? But is there a possibility there's a correlation between organized crime? Because one of the things about selling marijuana is the people that have always been selling marijuana have been criminals. When you make things legal in a state, the people that were selling it illegal flock to that state. And that, so, that's been proven so, so, to be true, so, that there's, there's a, a direct correlation between people being robbed. That uh, There was also a, a significant problem with credit cards and banks yep. where everyone was having to do all their transactions with cash. There was a lot of violence that was associated with marijuana in regards to that. And also massive increase in population. Yeah, you know? so, so, and that's so part wait, of the wait, reason wait, wait, why, why Trump is actually not really against uh, cannabis in some ways is because he feels that if we have medical marijuana laws, that especially the states that are that that, that are border states, that the crime's going to drop drop uh, tremendously, and it has dropped. They they did a study uh, last year and it dropped over fifteen percent in Colorado, a, that is a and it dropped seven percent in Arizona. So, and then again, you know Benjamin uh, Hanson, who, who's who's an yes, economist, who used the wrong he, data set so, for his well, charge. Let's, 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 let's talk over let's, each other. Okay, so he he said that the murder rate did not demonstrate yeah. that marijuana legalization increases violence and then it may have actually demonstrated that legalization slightly decreased violence and he thinks that the reason that there was an increase in the murder rate particularly in Washington is because there is a large income gap they say that Washington has the 10th largest income gap uh, in, in, in the United States and but that's why, why how did that change uh, yeah, though that exactly. corresponds to the murder good, rate good question Joe I'm um, so I haven't sp- you know I didn't get to, to speak with Benjamin uh, to, about this that but sounds like confirmation bias Yes. Well, he, I mean, if that, that is one thing that has been shown to, you know, um, increase mental illness, like we talked about, and can definitely increase violence is when you have um, an income gap. And right, that's but, how, gonna, but how's the income gap shifted that directly correlates to the so legalization the, of marijuana? Because during the same, because during the same period, the income gap, particularly in Washington, in, increased. Okay. So he feels that, you know, in a it's, corresponding number. Right. So he feels that, that it's, it's likely more, more to that. And I mean, he, I mean, I, I understand, but I mean, you have to respect this guy. I mean, but he, I don't he, have to respect him because I know what he did with his data. And, and tell me what he did okay, with so, his data. So, 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 so Joe, this this is maddening to me. Okay. 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 
violent crime in those four states increased more rapidly than in the U.S., period, between 2013 and 2017. Here, Jamie okay. just posted this okay, up so here. This Conjecture aside, no credible data exists that supports a significant association between the increased violent crime and marijuana legalization. Furthermore, studies suggest that, so far, violent crime decreases in states with legalized medical marijuana until new research credibly suggests otherwise the claim that a demonstrable link between the two exists will remain classified as false. Okay, so that's just not true. Okay, I know it's Snopes. Okay, and I know we trust Snopes. I don't it, trust them that much. Okay, they, there's a lot. Okay. I, I was going to say that too, but they they give all of their their links sources right okay. here if you'd so, like to. So again, so my data. What are these? So, do you are a you lot of those. aware of these sources? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've read this stuff. This and what's what, wrong with them? Okay, here, let me just go back to what okay. I'm, what I'm saying. Yeah, please okay. do. 2013, Oregon, Washington, Colorado, Alaska. Mm -hmm. There are 450 murders in those four states. There are 30,000 ag assaults. Period. Okay. 2017, Oregon, Washington, Colorado, Alaska. There are 620 murders in those four states. That's an almost 40% increase. There are 38,000 ag assaults. That's a 25% increase. If you adjust for population, you still get big increases. In Denver, 2018, almost 70 murders. There were about 35 in 2013. Seattle, 27, 2018, there were 34 or 35 murders. There were, I think, 19 in 2013. These increases are real. Okay. okay. They, now, now, now. Okay. can we say that marijuana legalization caused those increases? We cannot yet. There are other possibilities. And you're What are those? Um, well, one possible, first of all, population did increase. It's also possible that these states, quote unquote, imported violent crime. In other words, that you got a population of transients coming in in part because marijuana was legal right. and those people are likely to commit violent crime. And on top of that, organized oh, crime or, people that are selling. A absolutely. There may have been some people who are exporting to, to Nebraska, to Minnesota, to mm -hmm. other states. There's crime associated with that. But what I am saying is that unequivocally, unequivocally, the people who said legalization is going to decrease violent crime, and people did say that, and Cory Booker in 2017 said it, he said that it actually had decreased violent crime in states that legalized, and he didn't say it randomly, he said it when he was introducing legislation to legalize marijuana on the federal level. Those people are wrong, and they need to stop saying it. I know, and by the way, that Oregon economist used... <laughs> He used the wrong data set for his charts, okay? He used, I used the real numbers, okay? The FBI homicide numbers. He used numbers that include justifiable homicides no, and police homicides. No, that's not right. It because is, the FBI reported that the murder rate went up 1% from 2015 to 2016 as compared to the nationwide, which went up 7.9%, and then it dropped by 11.6% between 2016 and 2017. Okay, with respect, Those are Dr. FBI Hart, you numbers. Do, you do not know what you're talking about, okay? Those you are do, FBI you, numbers. You I'm reading it. do not know what you're talking about. The numbers <laughs> are clear, Okay. I use the I'm F reading them right now. Okay. 2016 release of FBI uniform crime reports from Oregon. Okay. Yes, Oregon. You're not reading the reports from the, the United States. You're picking one state for Jamie one year. Jamie showing something that's reported state that has legalized crime, medical cannabis over the entire okay. country from that time period too. So yes. to pick those four states where marijuana was legalized is and, sort of cherry picking. Data. No, it's not. It's picking every state it's, where they were legalized the whole, and comparing the whole it to country, the whole country. The whole country erased. But the, yes, the whole but country the whole is, whole is similar. Is it a similar it increase? No, that, that's, what I'm, no. that's what I'm trying to show. Yes. If I'm okay. trying to show okay. something wrong, okay. then but pull back so we can see the whole st so, the whole. So, uh, so thing. first of all, that's a that's violent crime, not murders and ag violent crime rate be in there. Well, violent crime and ag assaults aren't they? No. So 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 the four categories of violent crime are. Murder, ag assault, robbery, and rape. Rape has sort of gone sideways the last few years. Robberies actually have gone down. It's murders and ag assaults that are interpersonal violent crime. Okay, just to go back to this Oregon economist, because this maddens me. He used a data set that is not the standard data set to report murder rates. What is the difference? He used a data set that includes justifiable homicides, meaning I'm in my house, you come in, I shoot you and kill you, the police don't charge me with anything, right. and police homicides. But Guess, the data sets you use in your book aren't even let's published. Not, let's not let, interrupt. Let me finish. The, those two categories of crime are not likely to be impacted by cannabis use. Cops are not smoking when they're on patrol, I hope. And if you are using, you're very unlikely to have your murder viewed as justifiable homicide. The fair comparison is the base murder rate in the U.S. And that's the number that I used. And I am telling you, 
I mean, I, I know these numbers. I sleep, you know, I wake up with these numbers. Cannabis, uh, the four cannabis legal states on a per capita basis, crime murders rose 31% on a per capita basis in those four states over the 2013, 2017 period. Maybe, I'm sorry, I said 31, maybe it's 29%. So maybe I say I woke up with them. Anyway, the, the, for the U.S., it's 18%. 29% versus 18%. That's the gap. And I am not saying that I know that cannabis legalization caused that gap. What I'm saying is people need to stop claiming that cannabis legalization reduces violent crime. It in, it has increased in those states. Can I ask you, in those states, was it universal, the increase? Was it almost uh, yes. identical? Yes. Alaska was the most. Uh, then I think MERS went up more in Col in Washington. Uh, and, and what's also interesting, Joe, if, you're, if you really want to break go into the numbers is the gap actually widened year by year. So that's sort of what you would expect if this is the result of a psychomimetic effect. In other mm -hmm. words, a psychosis causing effect because cannabis doesn't cause psychosis right away. People break down. Right. But if it's causing heavy use and some of those people are sliding into you know, paranoia and psychosis, you'd sort of expect the gap to increase over time and that's what's happened. Okay, so you know, I'm gonna go back again to uh, the Netherlands, okay, because they've had you know cannabis legalized forever, and they have one fifth of the homicide rate that the United States does. You know, right, so but they also have a lower cannabis use. That's true. They also a have very again, few guns. But but yes. still, you know, one one a fifth. Lot of kickboxers though. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, one one fifth. I mean, it's still it's it's pretty drastic overall. And and again, you know, Alex, you know. You know, right, I appreciate but, but, some but of the when we're talking about sure. the correlation between cannabis yeah. use, one of the things that we have to accept in America is that when you're in a place like the Netherlands that has a long and accepted history of use, people are accustomed to it. So I think things kind of even out. I think one of the things that we're dealing with with the United States is people that have just they don't they don't have Never a long it. history of experience and it becomes legal and then they use it and maybe some of them like we're talking about don't have a tolerance for it, have too much. And like I was talking about with my friend who's like this really – the, the, the one who uh, had an edible and became suicidal and yeah. was fucked up for weeks. Guy's very confident, very articulate, very intelligent. He's not a, not a weirdo, not a, yeah. not a transient, extreme, extremely successful. You know, I think there, sure. are, there are variables that we need to take into consideration. And there's certain human beings that exhibit a pattern of behavior that's directly correlated to cannabis use that – uh, I don't experience. So if I, I could say from my own personal biases that that's bullshit, that's nothing, it doesn't do anything, I've been smoking for years, it doesn't do shit. Well, you probably don't have one of those three genes that we were talking about yeah, earlier. You're clearly yeah. pretty and, and, psychiatrically and, healthy. And, right? and you yeah. probably also, too, um, you know, don't overuse or, or you have some type of, you know, um, legitimacy as, as to why you, you, are, you are using it. And, you know, one, I, I want to keep going with this, but, you know, at, at the end of the show, I think that we should make some type of like recommendations um, for people just because I hate when you know you have this big you know three hour podcast and then at the end of it it's, it's just like hey guys just be safe you know I think <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like it's, so it's, true. Like, it's like let's have some sex that's so true <laughs> how about it <laughs> good it's luck like, you fucks <laughs> it's like let's have uh, yeah. you know some type of like um, recommendations like I love the podcast with uh, with, with, with uh, Cresser and Joel right mm -hmm. but um, at, uh, at the end of it it was just sort of like hey guys don't I eat think, the American diet I think most people realize that one person was going on data and the other person was yeah you know. yeah but joe yeah, i mean I, will, sure. I i find it so fascinating that now when you think back through your you know through your life you've you've thought of somebody who who was affected i have I, several people I, i'll bet i'll bet as you think about it you'll think of more people i i maybe but those are the big ones and like i said my friend who is a martial arts instructor it was a pretty significant issue with a lot of our friends we were trying to figure out what was wrong with him beforehand he was sending me these videos that didn't make any sense and uh, I was like, what in the fuck is this? Like, uh, I'll, I'll explain to you more off air so I don't have to uh, out this guy. But uh, well, the, all lot, a lot of people that were close to him were really seriously concerned. Now, it, is it something that would have happened anyway? I don't know. I don't know. How was, old was he? Since twenties, late twenties. Well, how, how old exactly? Late twenties, twenty. You know, that's right around the age. So, well, right. sort but of, it is sort of it is a little a little bit late ish. Like, because like I said, yeah. a lot of the studies, even when you look at uh, the ones on adolescents, like 
for sure it's it's below like they've they have done studies like below 18 is worse yes. than say below 25 yes. below 15 is worse yeah. than say 18 like mm-hmm. the younger you go um the worse and he and seems it, to be fine now that's good that's good is yeah. he using now i don't know i have to find and, out and it's uh you know i'm not an expert on this subject but it's it's because of this um of something called pruning that we go through so everyone g- g- um goes uh, through this and basically through your adolescence you're going to drop off some some weak neural connections to kind of pick up some stronger ones you know mm-hmm. it's the best way to kind of explain it um when you use cannabis you can potentially accelerate that process and then because you accelerate that process you don't get those good neural connections and then you know people unfortunately you know develop things like like psychosis and um and, and schizophrenia so you know that's kind of where where the where, where the issue lies so you know one thing that i am you know, very happy uh, that we're talking about, and I know Alex will be too. Is that you know we want to discuss the benefits in in this podcast, and make sure that people understand that you know I believe that marijuana is medicine; it's an excellent medicine. Um, but the other thing, though, too, is we do want to mitigate the risks because there are re- real risks out there. So you know, I I do appreciate you know um, us talking about adolescents and and making sure that they do stay away from cannabis. Yeah, and I, sp- I mean especially that's like tw- I, I read these you know these cases the case files sometimes and you know the the kid started using when he was 11 and you know it's like that kid never had a chance right mm-hmm. i mean and obviously yeah. oftentimes these are kids coming from disadvantaged backgrounds anyway but you know they're using by 11 and at 16 they put a you know put a gun to somebody's head and pull mm-hmm. the trigger i mean the the, the the, the pre-adolescent and early teen use, we got to do everything we can to stop. The problem is, yeah, like if you if you smoke pot in junior high, like say seven, eight, nine, like you're probably going to smoke pot in high school. Yeah. Like that's the, like, I mean, that's what I saw when, when I when I was growing up, and you know, even when I was uh, home for Christmas for for a few days, like yeah, a couple of my friends even talked about you know um, some people that we knew you know smoked a ton of pot in high school, and like now like they're 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 crazy or they're not really doing too too much yeah. you know so but you, you do have to be careful yeah. with that i think we're you dealing are, with a lot of <laughs> ignorance we're dealing with a lot of ignorance in the current when it, it comes to biological variability right we we, yeah, do, yeah. we don't really understand how a lot of these different things affect people including like just diet and what 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 causes depression like how much how much of what we constitute or what we des- decide as depression is inflammation, yes. uh, poor gut health. There's a lot of variables. There's yes. a lot of them. Marijuana is absolutely one of those variables. And, uh, again, I don't have an issue with it. I like it. I love the stuff. But it, does, it doesn't fuck with me. Right. But, I'm, but it, I'm also honest. And so I see these people where it's pretty obvious to me that something's going on and that marijuana is not a good idea for them. And I, I just think... You know, like I said, in the past, I my, myself have been guilty of using this uh, this sort of uh, b- blanket description of it as being a positive influence, and that it's a good thing for people. I don't think it's a good thing for everybody. No, it's definitely not a good thing for everybody, and it's definitely not a good thing for the people who have um, the, those genetics that I, that I yes. discussed earlier. And you know, also too, like you know, if you you need to have some type of like self awareness, like the people who you know don't do well with cannabis, you know, you you shouldn't have you to have your friends tell you that. <laughs> Okay, man. Like you're not right, doing too well right, with this. Right. You should be hey, able to bro. figure out yourself. Like, <laughs> but that's hard for people. I mean, yeah. that's one of the most difficult things for people to do is a self self assess. Yeah, you know, to be objective. You, you know, and and that it's a. Re- I've obviously I've heard from a lot of people who used heavily and seen other people who've used heavily in the last month. And I think it's very interesting why people continue to use when they're getting paranoid. Mm-hmm. And and you know the the most cogent argument. And again, I'm. I'm not, you know, I've smoked a handful of times in college and after college. I actually don't think I'd be comfortable using high THC cannabis now, knowing what I know. But anyway, so the pe- the, the people, the most. I got co- some right here. <laughs> <laughs> the most. The mo- <laughs> okay, I'm going to get hot boxed. Uh, um, I'll give mo- you the shit to put Elon on the moon. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 but the most, the most cogent argument. I thought it was so interesting. This guy said, well, you know, my friends, I would talk to them and say, I'm, I'm paranoid now, but I'm going to smoke through it. I'm going to smoke so much that I'm almost comfortable being paranoid. And I think that's a dangerous thing to do to your mind because mm. um, you're you're sort of counting on being able to step back from that and stop using. Yeah, that's a, that's a silly uh, way of looking at it. Um, yeah. 